Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? I keep going to move on, but the content gods just keep providing. Seriously, it's like a blessing from God. This time, though, something hilarious. Actually, truth be told, it's two things. Because from what I'm reading, Nurse Watts finale didn't go down too well with a lot of people. A lot of people. And, uh, hmm, the overnight audience score, yeah, that really, uh, that really reflects that apathy. But also, in other news, apparently, um, Leslie Headland doesn't know what a lesbian is, despite being one. Really? Really, really. Yeah, okay, so let's start off with Doctor Who, Nurse Watts, shall we? Because this will be quick, believe me. The lessons that need to be taught about the failure the failure of the Acolyte are not unique to Disney Star Wars, but can be found in another Disney champion brand these days, Nurse Watt, a show whose finale episode on Saturday, as I am told, went beyond leaving a sour taste in people's mouths, but went as far as to convince some diehards, yep, yeah, there still are, diehards who still supported this trash to reevaluate their positions, shall we say. Article after article after article, Twitter post after post after post, describing the blue board feeling people had when watching it. So, correct me if I'm wrong, because I didn't watch it as I didn't want to gouge out my eyes, Sutek, a character I remember very well from Tom Baker because that is actually one of my favourite episodes, believe it or not, was defeated by being hooked to an elasticated rope that then had him hurtling through the time vortex, almost like a visual representation of animal abuse. Nice job there, show. And then gets disintegrated into nothing. While the big mystery surrounding Ruby's mum is that, um, she's no one. She's literally no one. She's some randomer. Or more precisely, she's a 304 that couldn't shirk up to her responsibility of opening her legs and dumped her baby in the cold of night outside a church for them to take care of. That's, that's what they are claiming is Doctor Who now. That's what they want children to see as responsibility. Shirking responsibility, actually. Just based on that alone, these audience scores deserve to be way, way worse than this. I know they will have a bump at Christmas. We know that. It's going to happen. Because there's very little on terrestrial television around that time. And also people have a far, far too forgiving nature about them. So they'll probably get about 5 to 6 million consecutive viewers for that particular episode. But what about the next series? The one they're still contracted for? I'm not so sure. Yeah, shit! I mean, it's all shit! I stopped covering the individual episodes because I just could not take it anymore. I, I really couldn't. Oh, my headache had a headache. I swore I would not do it again. And true to my word, I have not seen these last two episodes. Funny thing is, though, two things immediately happened after I said that. First, I had the same detractors who say, if you don't like it, don't watch it, still come after me for even covering the subject of Nurse Watt. And second, and this was the surprising one for me, comments came in requesting I continue to cover the episodes. So I'm not going to do these last two episodes. I'm not going to do that because I said I'm not going to, and I don't really want to, to be honest. But, as I just mentioned with the Christmas special, maybe, maybe we'll see. It's almost worth it just to piss off the few stands that still support this muck. But that's a question for another time. For now, we move on to this. The Acolyte's creator doesn't believe her new Star Wars series is queer with a capital Q. Headland has said that she's had Star Wars stories in mind since childhood. Are you sure? Because <laughs> last I saw, you couldn't even name your favorite film. So when people are like, what's your, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? I'm like, there is no Star Wars movie. There is only Star Wars. There is no Star Wars movie. There is only Star Wars. Headland, whose first produced TV script for the critically acclaimed yet short-lived 2010 series Terriers, was directed by future Star Wars The Last Jedi filmmaker Rian Johnson. Oh dear. That would explain a lot. She immediately envisioned the hate you give star and Mandela Stenberg in the Acolyte's dual lead role of identical twins Osha and May Anisea. Anisea, is that right? I don't fucking know. Stenberg, who identifies as non-binary and gay? Wait, w what? <laughs> non-binary and gay? Isn't that like a contradiction or something? Non-binary. One, not relating to, composed of, or involving just two things. Two, denoting having or relating to a gender identity that does not conform to traditional binary beliefs about gender, which indicate that all individuals are exclusively either male or female. But you said you're gay. Okay, okay. This is what we mean by you all make this shit up. 
Let's just leave that as exhibit A and move the fuck on, because otherwise I'll be here all day. Headland is elated and relieved by the early response to a mystery thriller. It's been well received by critics, and the two episode June 4th premiere is also Disney Plus's strongest debut in 2024, with 11.1 million viewers over five days. You know, it's always funny how much Disney is able to weaponize the media into their own glorified personal spin doctor. So much so that they can even rival the most corrupt of politicians. Do I need to remind you, Leslie, of these ratings by the people who actually watched it? People you and your media friends will fob off and say it's review bombing, even though it's clearly evident that it's not. Disney Plus has, according to the official numbers anyway, a subscriber count of 111.3 million and over 38 million on add-on platforms. So I wouldn't be bragging about 11.1 million views in its first five days. What you are actually saying is in five days, roughly only 10% of your subs watch this. That's not good. Not good at all. Perhaps the most queer adjacent story point is that the 24-year-old and near... Oh, I can't even say that fucking word. Anissa... An Anissira? Anissira. We'll go with that. About fucking time! The Anissira twins were born to two mums, whom plenty of internet commentators are calling a lesbian couple. What? <laughs> Leslie, that's what they are. By literal definition. Oh, but it gets worse. They're in a matriarchal society. As a gay woman, I knew it would read that their sexuality is queer, but there also aren't any men in their community. Hmm, no, no, okay, not gonna go there. So a closeness between the two of them would be natural. It seemed plot driven, she adds. I would say it's really reductive to call them lesbians. I think it means you're not really paying attention to this story. No one's paying attention to this story because this story doesn't make sense. But that's besides the point. Reductive to call them lesbians? Are you high? The fact I have to crack out the definition of lesbian should be really worrying when a writer who is meant to be one doesn't know what one is. Lesbian. Denoting or relating to women who are sexually or romantically attractive exclusively to other women, or to sexual attraction or activity between women. A woman who is sexually or romantically attractive exclusively to other women, or as they say, a gay woman. Retards. These people are literally insane. It's like a permanent word salad where everything has double meaning, or where you can easily commit wrong thing to coin the ever popular 1984 term. 1984, a story which seems to be more of a reality with each passing day. Headland stresses that she is by no means running from any material that might speak to queer audience members. I'm proud of being a gay woman. Clearly not, you don't know what one is. Certainly if my content is called queer, I don't want to disown whatever queerness is in the show. I would be proud to create something that inspired queer people. Uh, okay, so let's air this out. These witches are women, who love other women, but aren't lesbians, but if they are queer, that's okay too. What? Like most creatives, Hedlund welcomes constructive criticism of her series. I do not believe you. But ever since Star Wars The Force Awakens refocused the episodic film franchise on Daisy Ridley's female Jedi, Rey, scrutinizing Star Wars for any hint of progressivism has become an online cottage industry for combative fans who yearn for that kind of representation that was pro forma in the 1970s and 80s. Boo, you whore. You mean back when story took precedence over messaging? Yes, I remember those days too. Inevitably, this contingent of the Orchans has eagerly put the acolyte in the crosshairs and made a meal out of the aforementioned Junker interaction. Honestly, I feel sad that people would think that if something were gay, that it would be bad. Too much talking, 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 too much talking. No, no, Leslie. There are many things that are alphabet related that are good. Very good. Some of them you can see on screen now. The issue is, you think saying what you like to sleep with is more important than entertaining the majority of people who are not in line with your sexual habits. It makes me feel sad that a bunch of people on the internet would somehow dismantle what I consider to be the most important piece of art that I've ever made. <laughs> Leslie, sweetheart, let this be my final word on this article. No one gives a shit about your version of art. And I mean you specifically. Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant for four years. You. No, I don't care about your art. You don't deserve people to care about your art. You don't understand art, nor do you understand Star Wars or fandom in general. What I will do, and I give you my word on this, and what others will do is continue to speak our minds. Say what we know to be true. Speaking the truth, not our truth. Maybe one day people like you can actually listen for a change instead of having your heads buried in the sand or up your ass either way. 
But until that day, I will bid you adieu. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you.